Hey guys, Mark Smith, JBS Training Group. This video is going to be on first focal plane and second focal plane optics, uh, what that actually means and why you care. So I think the, probably the best way to approach this is first to kind of help you guys understand what's going on inside of the scope. Um, this is the short and sweet version, right? Um, there's an erector tube inside of this thing somewhere about midways and that erector tube holds all the magnification lenses that do the magnifying. Now when we choose a reticle, we choose second focal plane or first focal plane. Now second focal plane is going to put that reticle behind the magnification, meaning when you magnify the, uh, the image, the reticle is going to stay the exact same size. It's not on the same focal plane as the image. So I magnify to 6x, uh, image grows 6x, six times, and reticle stays the exact same. On a first focal plane optic, the reticle is going to grow with the image. Okay, so um, it's it's housed in the front of that magnification, and as we're magnifying it, it and the image is growing, whatever the magnification range is. Why does that matter? Well, for a lot of people it doesn't, but for uh, some you know some scenarios, some instances, it absolutely can. So we'll kind of get into that now, and we'll touch on zero in these things and a couple of little. Um, a couple of theories and myths that are out there that I kind of want to knock out real quick. All right, so what's the difference and why do you care? So with the first focal plane reticle, the image and the reticle are growing at the exact same time, which means that the reticle is going to be true all the way through the magnification range. Let's think of a reticle kind of like a measuring tape, right? So there's a little measuring tape inside of your optic. If I put this in front of a magnifying glass, the magnifying glass is going to magnify this and it's going to magnify the image, which means this is going to remain true to size with the image all the way through that magnification range. If I put this behind a magnification glass, now the magnification glass is only magnifying the image itself. This remains the same size no matter what. So I think that for the higher magnification ranges, um, for optics such as this Leupold Mark 5 right here, 3 to 18, well, I'm not going from 3 to 18 exclusively, I might stop on 12, might stop on 10, might stop on 15, uh, depending on the target size, distance, whatever I need to see. So I need that reticle to be growing with that image so that no matter where I land in this magnification range, that reticle is still true and the, the drop and the data that I still have is still applicable at whatever distance in whatever magnification range. So. That's kind of the benefit of the first focal plane if you're the guy that's shooting far enough out to actually need that, that drop data, to need that reticle to be able to hold, then you're gonna absolutely wanna use this, uh, this first focal plane if you're gonna be in between magnification ranges with a higher powered optic. Now, if we're talking about something like this Collis one to six, it gets a little different. So, with the Collis one to six, the, the ranges that I'm going to be using this thing at are probably going to be 300 yards and in. I, I typically like 2x for every 100 yards. If I'm shooting farther than that, right, so I'm going to be at 500 yards, I, I don't really know why you wouldn't go ahead and just roll it up to 6x, which is going to make the reticle true anyway. Um, the, the problem with the second focal plane, if you say you wanted to do four out of the six, well, the reticle is not going to be true because it's in a second focal plane. The reticle has not magnified itself or the, I'm sorry, the image has not magnified itself to make the reticle mills be true mills at any given distance. So what happens is most often, if I'm shooting anything farther than 200 yards or so, I'm going to 6X anyway. I'm never gonna stop somewhere in the, in the middle. I'm not saying there's not a situation in the world where that can't happen. I'm just saying for me and the way I shoot, most of the time it doesn't. Now, if I am gonna go somewhere in the middle, let's say I'm gonna go to 4X, right? That's probably gonna be in the thick of the woods, uh, zooming in on, a, on an animal or something like that, make sure to see what I need to see, that kind of thing, but it's not gonna be at a distance that's great enough to be utilizing the reticle for ballistic hold, right? So the second focal plane for me is, uh, is for the, you know, the general purpose gun that I'm gonna use out to 200, 300 yards, something like that. Uh, I'm going to utilize this really awesome glass, this really smooth throw lever ring, good illumination, um, just a really great overall light scope, and I'm going to use it just like a dot until I need to zoom in and I need to see something better. If I need to see something better, this thing, because I like 2x for every 100 yards, is probably only going to give me what I want out to 300. 
at 300. I know my hold for the guns that this normally rides on is gonna be one mil or less. And so at one mil or less, I'm gonna be magnified at 6X anyway. Hold it, shoot it, good to go, right? So that's, uh, that's the second focal plane, the way I think about it and the way I would utilize it. Now, does that mean that you can't shoot a second focal plane one to six out to five, six, seven hundred yards? No, it absolutely does not. It just simply means that while you can shoot 300 yards with a red dot equipped carbine, that don't necessarily make it the best tool that you could have picked, right? So if I know that I'm gonna go out to four, five, six, seven hundred yards, I'm gonna pick a better tool for the job, such as a one to eight, one to 10, you know, uh, three to 18, three to 15, three to, you know, something, something that's gonna give me a little more zoom, a little more opportunity to be able to see a little bit better. At that point, now we're transitioning into, into, into where I start thinking that, yeah, first focal plane is probably gonna be best suited in this arena, right? So we'll talk about that a little bit. So let's switch gears. We're going shooting and we know we're gonna go out to 600 yards, okay? My, my mind kind of works like this. If I'm gonna go out to 600 yards, would I rather grab the second focal plane, one to four or one to six, or would I rather grab something like the first focal plane, three to 18, right? Or the first focal plane, night force attacker, or the first focal plane, vortex razor, uh, gen three, one to 10. This scope is probably, uh, it's absolutely one of my favorites, if not the favorite for its versatility at multiple different ranges, right? So if I'm gonna shoot this gun out to five or 600 yards, I'm gonna be doing it probably not all the way at 10X all the time, okay? But I like that 10X because it gives me the ability to zoom in all the way out to 800, you know, and, and see something. But you remember I like 2X for every 100 yards, so this is an absolute 500, uh, 500 yard scope so at 500 yards now we're getting into three three and a half mils sometimes four mils a drop i want a better reticle that gives me that information a lot easier than something like the sm1 reticle in that collis right there that just has mil hash ticks has no numbers has no wind has no nothing i'm shooting now far enough five six hundred yards to start to play with wind and i need or i don't need i want that reticle to have some numbers on it so that I can quickly reference, hey, where is four mils? Okay, right here, instead of going, okay, there's one, there's two, there's three, right? So also, when dialing from one to something like a 10, it's a pretty long magnification roll, and it's not uncommon for me to be shooting, 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 go to dial, and end up somewhere around seven instead of 10. Right? Well, because this reticle grows with the image, that's totally okay, because the reticle is still true at any given magnification range. If I didn't make it all the way to 10, I just made it to like nine, no big deal, right? Um, I've watched guys at matches go to roll a scope in the second focal plane to what they thought was the max magnification range, and they didn't quite make it all the way. They just made it almost there, their reticle's not true, and they spend about 30 seconds thinking that they suck at shooting, while not realizing that their magnification ring isn't maxed out to be able to utilize the true measurements of that reticle in that magnification range. So first focal plane, man, a uh, lot more versatility at different magnification ranges and different yard lines. Do you need it? It's up for you to decide, right? Um, I'm, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I, I use both, right? But they're, they're based on a certain role, right? They're based on certain parameters that I'm gonna use them in. So I think that if you're gonna use first focal plane, that's gonna generally be in the higher power optics, the optics that would make more sense to be you know, shooting those farther distances with. Um, once again, totally not saying you can't shoot distance with a one to four, one to six, absolutely I've done it, but that doesn't make it the easiest, best thing to be using, right? Um, I like making make shooting easy, man. So if I'm going out to 600, absolutely taking something like the one to 10, three to 18, something like that, help me to see a little bit better are a lot better and in some cases give me a usable reticle that I can utilize with uh, with wind with holds got numbers in the in the mill grid and it's magnifying with the image so if I got some stuff to shoot at 300 right cool 6x let's push on out to 500 10x 600 10x right easy day um, and that's kind of my thoughts on first focal plane and second focal plane and where they would be utilized. There's a lot more to it than this, man, and I'm just kind of making a, a quick and dirty on, you know, 
how I think about it and how I use it. I want to talk real quick about zero in these things because I feel like there's some misconceptions out there about that. So one of the things that um, I get asked often is when zeroing a second focal plane reticle optic, do you zero at 1x or 6x? And I think what these guys are confused about is they think that their zero is shifting because the magnification range is changing the reticle size in relation to the target. So if we think about this like a tape measure, check this out. The tape measure, while it has multiple measuring points on it, it has a zero, right? This is the zero. This would be the center of that reticle, the, the zeroing point inside that reticle. If I put that in the center of the target, whether I magnify the reticle, the measuring tape, or not, the zero never moves. So it doesn't matter whether you zero at 1x, 6x, 4x, whatever, the zero is still the zero. It's just that the reticle is not true until you're at the max magnification range. Same thing applies to the first focal plane optic, obviously, uh, zero it at any magnification range you want. So that's about all I got on first focal plane, second focal plane without giving you guys a 30 minute video. So sorry it took so long to get all that out, but. Um, you know, there's a lot of misconception out there about first focal plane, second focal plane. Hopefully that makes sense to you, man. If, if you got some questions, drop them in the comments. Um, hit me up, jbstraininggroup at gmail.com if I can help you. And be looking for the uh, performance out yonder curriculum that's getting ready to come up. Um, I think we're going to drop that here soon. And we're going to have the first class for that. It's going to be uh, in August out in Port Angeles, Washington. So that would be freaking beautiful. Uh, but that's just going to be my idea of a, a general all-around American rifleman, man, rocking and rolling with his with his LPVO and his 14 and a half, you know, 12 and a half inch gun, getting it on out to out to 300 yards. And what does what does it take to do that with? So I'm pretty excited to start putting all this stuff to use, um, teach people about you know about reticles and about focal planes and about what I found along the way about what optic works best for different things. So hopefully that was uh, enough to give you something to think about. Appreciate the heck out of you guys, man. If you got any. Uh, Got any other questions, like I say, hit me up. Mark Smith, jbstraininggroup.com, JBS Training Group on Facebook, JBS underscore training group on Instagram. Thanks, dudes. See y'all on the range.